welcome to this video. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate that you decided to click on this video and listen to my voice. Um, if you read the title of this video, which I'm assuming that you did, um, you have some inkling as to what this video is going to be about, but I will give you an intro into all of this. This is something that the cryptic pregnancy of years community or women who believe themselves to be years pregnant, they use this um, as proof, as evidence that a preg pregnancy of years is possible. And after reading the entire thing, I can tell you some very, very important points about it. So what we're talking about here is the very knowledge, law, reproduction, and the female body in modern Morocco. And I'm going to stand right here so that I can put it right here for you to see for yourself by Satel K. Larson. This is a dissertation submitted in partial satisfaction of the requirements of the degree of Dr. Philosophy in the Graduate Division of the University of California in Berkeley. So combining historical and juridical and ethnographic analysis, my dissertation traces a history of evidence of reproductive bodies and not yet born over the cast of the last century through a case study of a regional phenomenon known as the sleeping baby in the mother's womb. Women with sleeping babies experience pregnancies that can last for years beyond the standard nine months accepted in Western law and medicine. According to the belief in the sleeping baby, a sudden traumatic experience or the return of the menstrual blood can arrest the, de the development of the fetus in the womb. The fetus will then sleep in the womb neither living nor dead for an indefinite period of time until it is awoken by another traumatic shock, sexual intercourse, or spiritual and herbal treatments. As a legal doctrine in Islamic law, the sleeping baby admitted protracted pre pregnancies lasting up to five, in some cases seven years after conception, prior to the codification of Islamic family law between 1957 and 1959, which banished the sleeping baby from official law the sleeping baby phenomenon and discourse address the intersection of the psychobiological and social legal aspects of human reproduction. The biological aspects include false or hysterical pregnancies, pseudocyesis, abortion induced by the mother, ectopic pregnancies, and various kinds of miscarriages, both those are that are expelled from the mother's uterus and those that are retained as well as viable for full-term preg pregnancies in which the woman gives birth to a living baby. The social legal aspects include claims to paternity, contestations of paternity, inheritance disputes, spousal and child maintenance claims, adultery and the status of the children of slave mothers, and free mothers based on their marital situation. The discourse of the sleepy baby enabled women to express any of the various contingent combinations that could arise from these biological and social contingencies. That is a mouthful, so please bear with me. So a sleeping baby could come out of any of those situations. It's important to understand that the sleeping baby or the theory of the sleeping baby was asked for or declared by the woman herself. So the mother or the, the woman would herself decide that she is pregnant and that the baby is then put to sleep or is now sleeping. Or she goes to a kwabala or a midwife healer and asks them to put the baby to sleep or someone else that is envious or jealous of the woman can then put her unborn child to sleep. Those are the three ways that the sleeping baby occurs. A sleeping baby doesn't just happen. It's not like a random occurrence. The woman herself declares that she is pregnant and then that the child is then sleeping. Or she goes to this person, the midwife, the kwabala, or the healer, and they just declare that the unborn child has been put to sleep. Or she decides that her child has been put to sleep because of somebody in the family or somebody that she knows, somebody in the village who is envious or jealous of her. 
So, which means that this woman is completely 100% aware that she is carrying, supposedly carrying a baby that is not growing and may even, and the woman may even die carrying this sleeping baby all the way until death. So she could, the woman could die without ever delivering this sleeping child. She can, the woman can even go as far as declaring she is no longer with a sleeping child without ever delivering a baby. So she can decide that she is now no longer, like the child is no longer sleeping and that she's no longer pregnant. She can declare this herself. And I'll put a page here that um, backs up what I'm saying. For the sake of time, I don't really want to read word for word, but this is a document that's easily um, search for yourself and you can verify these things. It's on page 90, right here. Um, so she herself can decide that she's no longer pregnant um, without ever like delivering a child or so-called losing a child. So like she never miscarries she never has a stillborn or stillbirth that, that never happens. She just decides that she's no longer carrying a sleeping child. And or this, the woman who says that she has a sleeping child will die um, with this sleeping baby still inside of her. And on page 146, um, that basically backs up those claims. So then the next one, I mean, basically what you, the next question would def definitely be, is the sleeping baby in Islamic and Moroccan law based on medical observation and evidence? Because if it is, this is like, like monumental, right? The simple answer is no. The sleeping baby itself is not based on medical observation and evidence. In fact, the sleeping baby in Islamic and Mor Moroccan law is based only on women's collective knowledge about birth and reproduction. It's based only on the woman's subjective claims and the midwife's subjective, sorry, and the midwife's subjective claims about the woman in question's body. I have this information. All of the information that I'm putting here is always to support what I am saying. It's also important to understand and completely grasp that not all women had access to claiming a sleeping baby. This is a huge red flag. Slave women did not have access to gendered time. So this, the sleeping baby is not something that could be claimed by anybody and everybody. It was only a certain, certain type of people that they would allow to claim the that they would allow the woman to claim that she was in fact carrying a sleepy baby. That makes sense. So is the sleeping baby in Islamic and Moroccan law a cryptic pregnancy of years? The short answer is no. According to the dissertation itself, the sleeping baby in Islamic law and Moroccan law is not an invisible baby and it's not unseen in any way. In fact, it can be confirmed by Moroccan midwives and by the woman's testimony about the sexual function of her bodies. And here, um, there are different techniques they use in order for the Moroccan midwife to confirm that the woman is in fact having a sleeping baby. So, and that's supported by page 106. It's definitely not something that only the mother herself can feel and claim. She can go to another I mean, midwife, which would be a professional who would also verify these claims. The reason why it is unlike a cryptic pregnancy of years is that there is no medical professional that supports a cryptic pregnancy of years. So it is unlike the sleeping baby because the sleeping baby has medical professionals that actually support this theory. Comment below if you don't understand what I mean. 
on page 97, it is talked about um, the court district court case of Ca Casablanca in 1970 and ends in the civil division of the Supreme Court in 1971. It takes up the issue on how to legally determine a date of birth. It presents the question of whether the witnessing of two midwives who have been diagnosed a sleeping pregnancy can be considered as evidence when according to the Supreme Court, the only Islamically legitimate form of witnessing is the one that witnesses the movements and life of the fetus, which can only be detected after four months and 10 days. The Supreme Court overrules the lower court's judgment based on the fact that it had had accepted the midwife's testimony about the sleeping baby, which cannot be considered. In an indirect way, the judgment shows that pregnancy and reproduction have taken on a new meaning and that only movement and life will be admitted as true evidence. So technically the sleeping baby in theory has arrested development, sorry, arrested development, meaning it is the fetus itself is not growing or developing in any way whatsoever. So the sleeping baby in theory is neither living nor dead. So there, how do you explain this? Like, so a sleeping baby in theory of four months would not be developed enough to witness the movements and life because the supposed sleeping baby in question is not living therefore it is not moving and i will put here um actual midwives who who believe in the sleeping baby say that it does not move and that the child became dry in her womb so if it's not living it's not moving if it's it's technically if you were to break it down in a different way it's in suspended animation because if it was moving i mean sorry if it was growing and developing developing then it would be animated it would be moving but because it's not growing and developing it's not animated it's li literally like frozen it's like it's like an existence that you that the human mind cannot understand and so so yeah so the the the, the movements of life the, the there you would not be able to feel that in a sleeping baby in in the theory of a sleeping baby because it's not moving because it's not living so i'm going to put this up here says the sleeping baby is a manipulation of the law, a feminine strategy or tactic, a ruse. Declared by the World Bank and European Union on page, this is found on page 97. So I also want to say that in the sleeping baby, they use Moroccan midwives to confirm that the woman was actually experiencing a sleeping baby. However, those women never like they never felt the movements from the outside in order to confirm the pregnancy because in theory the sleeping baby is not moving so there's no way to really confirm that what they are feeling on the outside is a baby or if it's just a mass because it's not because it has no animation because it's not growing and developing so it could just be like a large tumor does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Anyways, moving on. On page 101, it says, A variety of women could turn to the law and the courts for this justice and protection. The sleeping baby's function was to legitimize children, safeguard the reputation of the woman and the baby, acquire inheritance rights, and a pension for an unborn child, acquire financial compensation, and special treatment. A lot of women who are pregnant will maybe get some special treatment from family members, their husband, their children. So these women might experience no beatings or less beatings, no forced sexual intercourse or less forced sexual intercourse. They might have start to be showered with new clothes, um, maybe even get a new place, a new house, a new shelter. They may have access to more food because they're pregnant. They may have um, increased 
availability for rest because they're pregnant, um, maybe even being a little bit spoiled while pregnant. Um, some women, when they are pregnant, they are able to go to doctor's appointments and healthcare. They have access to regular doctor's appointments and healthcare. A lot of, there's some women out there who their husbands do not allow them to see the doctor or go to the doctor unless they are pregnant. So having a pregnancy of years would be very beneficial to a woman in that circumstance. Some women are have access to state-funded health care coverage while they are pregnant and one of the major ones is a pregnancy of years gives you marriage stability. It helps stabilize the marriage during the time of the pregnancy. So if that pregnancy is four years, five years, seven years, ten years, during that time it provides that woman the marriage stability and that would be very ben ben beneficial in a pregnancy of years. So if you go down to page 81 in this dissertation, it says at the bottom of page 81, it says the midwife's belief in the sleeping babies grew trust by her irrational religiosity, which further discredits her in the eyes of the colonial experts from properly and competently speaking about her knowledge of the reproductive functions of the female body. You can read that for yourself. At the top of page 82, it goes on to say that the prenatal care techniques of the midwives, including the diagnosis of pregnancy and the determination of its age, are further discredited since they do not look at or touch the vagina and in large part rely on the utterances of the women who come to see them. So at the bottom of page 84 of this dissertation, it reads, Two cases of a sleeping baby seen by a French gynecologist. In the first case, a married woman who menstruates irregularly comes to see the doctor after having insignificant periods for seven months, during which time she saw her belly grow and felt the active movements of her infant. Upon examination, her uterus was manifestly empty. In front of the statement of the doctor, the young woman retained incredulous, I feel the movements of the infant. The doctor responds by telling her that it is impossible since her womb is quite little and certainly empty. The second case of the sleeping baby examined by the same French obstetrician reveals a colonial fear of the effects of the female speech on the community. A woman who appears to be of menopausal age visits the doctor to find out why she has not yet given birth since she has not yet had her period for one year. Already having had three children, she is convinced that she is pregnant and has felt the movements of her infant for some time already. Upon examination, the doctor confirms that the woman is without a doubt pregnant and will give birth in approximately four months. While the infant months have been asleep, the woman responds, the author of the article comments on the dangerous effects of this last statement and no power on earth will make this woman of absolutely good faith and crazed with maternity understand that she did not become pregnant until after an Anne Maria of seven months, meaning after she didn't have a period for seven months due to her age. And this woman who will give birth one day, as well as her family and her entire village will already be ready to testify Z bent O carried her living child for 12 months. The woman's utterances about the sleeping baby is French obstetrics because the woman before finally agreeing to the obstetrician will go to all of her friends and tell them that the doctor was not able to find the sleeping infant that she will then one day give birth to. When she eventually, or when she actually becomes pregnant a month or a year later, this story will only add fuel to feminine gossip. The woman will do nothing but persuade young and even younger suggestible women of the fact that she carried a sleeping child for a long period of time. Here it is, not only the belief in the sleeping baby that is presented as the danger, but feminine gossip and the power of women to persuade and influence other women regarding the sexual functioning of their bodies, a power that should be reserved primarily for the medical expert. On page 85 it reads, another article published in Moroc Medical, the myth of the sleeping infant occasion for a gynecological exam argues that the title would suggest that the cure for the sleeping baby is the expertise of the gynecologist together with the technique of the gynecological exam. The Dr. P. Lalu offers a brief sociological account of the sleeping baby as an essential element that holds together Moroccan marriages 
insofar as it helps to sustain the tranquility and sustainability of this matriarchy that confers to the Moroccan woman in sovereignty and authority over her home. The basis of this domestic sovereignty is the power of the woman to bear children for her spouse, for whom the concept of marriage is unconceivable without children. Prolonged, pers prolonged pregnancies are an undeniable factor of familial calm and stability. This is because of the importance of women bearing children to a marriage. If the marriage is without children and visits the various healers, doctors, and spiritual guides do not result in pregnancy, the woman is at, is at risk for, I'm just going to say rejection, which, is, which for her is a terrible dramatic event. The myth of the sleeping baby affords the woman the opportunity to avoid being rejected and to keep her marriage intact for as long as she remains pregnant. Lalu claims that while the sleeping baby is in a dispensable social corrective for marital problems, it is not for the doctors to decide whether in a particular instance the woman is deploying it as an artful feminine ruse or whether she sincerely believes in her sleeping baby. Rather, it is in the basis of the sleeping baby, he argues, that doctors have the unique occasion to take gynecological stock of women who are for no other reason would have decided to undergo such an examination. says, Lal rehearses the surrealist biological discourses found in the article wherein the female body becomes the site of the production of unproductive, reproductive labor, monstrosity, horror, and death. In this case, the relationship between the biological discourse and the need for the gynecological examination is explicit. The woman cannot be trusted to manage her reproductive functions nor to speak about them truthfully. Both cases justify the need for a precise interrogation followed by a gynecological examination for any Moroccan woman coming for a consultation for a raged or sleeping baby. So they speak about where it says here, <clears throat> monstrosity, horror, and death within the female body. So is the theory of the sleeping baby actually a monster? So on page 70 of this dissertation, they talk about, let's see, sleep is simulated by five clinical anomaly, anomalies, anomal, anom, anomalies that lead to variations of the duration of pregnancy and access in the normal gestation period. In addition to the four common, most common possibilities that the article discusses at greater length, there are other excessive variations. These places include in which the pregnancy leads to the birth of a monster, a Martel has reported the observation of a terracephanel. Last period, December 1924, birth November 10th, 1925, of said monster weighing five kilograms. Um, this means that, I mean, this, this was less than a year. This was 11th month pregnancy from December 1924 to November 1925. That's an 11 month pregnancy. Jose reported two cases of anaphylactic fetuses one born 33 333 days after the last menstrual period which is actually an 11 month pregnancy and the other was 330 days weight four kilograms these were the said monsters that were born from extended gestations and all of these lasted around 11 months I also want to highlight that it says here, the existence of monsters calls into question the capacity of life to each us order, writes Can Golhim. And also it goes on to say that in addition to the cases in which the woman gives birth to a monster, the four other possible prenatal errors are discussed in other possible occurrences, which are the ectopic pregnancy, occurs when the egg is implanted outside of the uterus in the fallopian tube, the cervix, or the peritoneal or abdominal cavity. Then there is the prolonged aseptic retention when the female body deceives by appearing reproductive when it's not. After a beginning of normal pregnancy accompanied by all the symptoms, the egg dies at a precocious stage and this egg can be retained for months, years even, during which it mummifies then it is eliminated in a form that is not always recognizable. So in both clinical cases, ectopic and aseptic, the sleeping baby simulates life 
labor and reproduction in the female body when there is actually death in unrecognizable forms. And then there is the third clinical cause of error in pregnancy that arrive in a pregnancy that arrives after a period of prolonged am amoria. So a pregnancy that arrives after a prolonged period of the woman not having a period. So she's gone months and months and months without a period and then she gets pregnant. Again, the appearance of the female body betrays life. The beginning of the lack of menstrual period can be accompanied by signs which are not unlike the signs of pregnancy. The fourth and most frequent cause of error, a pregnancy by pure illusion, a false, imaginary, or hysterical pregnancy. These clinical cases present themselves in the following manner. The woman does not have her period, and since the beginning of her Anne Maria, crazed with maternity, she interprets all the symptoms as signs of pregnancy. She grows bigger. She vomits. She sees her breasts grow in volume. Her breasts take the appearance of a pregnant breast in which the colostral secretion appears. She believes to feel the active movements of the fetus and thus arrives at term, or more exactly, at that time which she believes to be the term. At this moment, she produces a false labor, loses bloody mucus, and has labor pains. They explain that all the obstetricians have seen or will see such similar cases were called to terminate a birth with forceps, they only find an empty uterus. Unlike the obstetricians in such cases who recognize right away that the woman is not in labor, the midwives in such cases are always persuaded and persuading about the fact of pregnancy. After any of these ver varieties of false labor, everything returns to order. For the Muslims, the infant sleeps. So on page 72 it reads, these anomalies form part of a surrealist biological discourse about the horrifying possibilities of things created by the reproductively defiant female body. Monsters, mummies, stone babies, ghosts, simulacrums, things that blur the line between life and death, between the human and the non-human. Very interesting.